So our word psychology has its origins in the Greek word, which means soul. And in the human soul, the two chief highest powers are the intellect and the will. And the intellect is ordered to knowing reality, the truth about reality, and the will is ordered to uh, pursuing the goodness of all real reality. And like two spiritual arms, the intellect and the soul reach out and embrace and engage reality under their proper aspects, the aspects of truth, and the aspect of goodness. And as we recall, in human action, the end is the most important external principle of action. No action begins without an end, and no action terminates or finishes without an end. And even understanding an action, we cannot understand an action without some reference to an end. It's incomprehensible without some purpose, some order, some directedness. And so what Aquinas does in questions 11 through 17 of the Prima Secundae is he summarizes how the intellect and the will, these two spiritual powers, relate to the end, chiefly the highest end, God himself, and also how they both, in their respective ways, effect actions that are ordered to the end. And so he talks about seven things here. He speaks about, firstly, enjoyment, which is the sweet and satisfied calming of the will, which delights when in, when in the possession of the end. When the end is possessed, the will has a certain sweet satisfaction in possessing the desired, the intended end. And after enjoyment, he proceeds to intention, which is, again, an act of the will, that tends towards, orients towards the attainment of the end. And thirdly, he speaks of choice, choice of means, which is an act of the will that selects particular steps the intellect has identified as conducive to the attainment of an end. Fourthly, he talks about counsel. And this time, this is an act of the intellect. Counsel is reason's consideration of the various means possible to attain an end. Fifth, he talks about consent. And consent is also an act of reason, but this time united, inspired by the desire for the end. It represents, consent represents the final decision to act in the concrete to actually identify and to use specific means for the attainment of the end. Six, Aquinas returns to the will again and considers what he calls use. And use is the will's application of specific means to the end. And finally, he returns to the intellect and talks about command. And command is reason's ordering direction the order of reason issuing forth in directions, directives to the end. Through command, reason either says this means this thing should be done to attain the end, or more imperatively, do this thing, do this action to attain the end. And so we could say that each of these are discrete parts of the psychology of human action in relation to the two spiritual powers of the human person, the intellect and the will. The intellect and the will both are involved intimately, necessarily, essentially in any authentic human action, and both in their own ways, intellect, truth, will, goodness, engage the reality, are drawn to the reality of the intended end.